Well, thank you, Prosecutor, for an incredibly strong statement and commitment uh, to the residents of Atlantic County to fight the scourge, and I appreciate uh, the differentiation between those who need recovery, and we certainly want to help them, versus those who are peddling uh, uh, this deadly drug. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to the Atlantic County Sheriff uh, Eric Scheffler for hosting us uh, here today. We appreciate it. We're going to hear from him shortly. Uh, to Angela Valenti, a partnership for a drug-free New Jersey, who's been at it for several decades already. We, we appreciate your advocacy. And then two uh, dauntless advocates in the fight against opioids, uh, Ms. Patrice Lenowitz and Ms. Sally Onesti, uh, who are going to share their personal compelling uh, stories, uh, which I appreciate them turning uh, tragedy uh, into a, a mission uh, to, to save others' lives. Um, we're here today to raise awareness about fentanyl and other opioids that are devastating communities up and down our state. I say up and down our state because last week I held a similar event at the New Jersey State Police Headquarters in Passaic County. And whether you are northern or southern New Jersey, the crisis is the same, one that can be described in stark numbers and dramatic increases. Just over 10 years ago, fentanyl accounted for just 4% of drug overdoses in New Jersey. In 2019, that 4% went to 75%. Across the country, overdose rates essentially doubled in that time frame. And just last year, the Center for Disease Control estimates that nearly 110,000 Americans lost their lives to an overdose, two-thirds of them due to fentanyl. A lethal dose of fentanyl is just two milligrams. And to give you a sense of that, it's quality, a, qu a quantity roughly the size of the year that is stamped on every penny. When mixed into other illicit drugs and counterfeit prescriptions, fentanyl becomes cheap to produce, easy to conceal, and extremely dangerous in minuscule amounts. Last year, federal agencies enough illegal fentanyl to kill every single American in this country. More than 379 million doses. The fact alone should stop us in our tracks, which is why today we're discussing landmark legislation to crack down on fentanyl. Passed by the Senate as part of the annual defense spending bill, the Fend Off Fentanyl Act would bolster efforts to disrupt the trafficking of fentanyl into the United States. The bill would declare international fentanyl trafficking a national emergency. It would impose strict sanctions on the drug cartels and transnational criminal organizations that profit from this poison. By enhancing laws that are already on the books, the Fendall Fentanyl Act would also empower the federal government to prosecute manufacturers, suppliers, and smugglers of fentanyl to the fullest extent of the law. It's a strongly bipartisan bill. Why? Because when it comes to fentanyl tearing our communities apart, we aren't Democrats or Republicans. We're Americans first. As elected officials, we have a solemn responsibility to safeguard Americans from the ravages of the opioid epidemic. And by targeting fentanyl and its revenue streams, we both protect our national security and provide our law enforcement with the tools they need to address this issue head on. We're all heartened by the recent progress on this front. Last month, New Jersey's Attorney General announced the seizure and takedown of an alleged drug production and distribution facility in Patterson. Uh, those are important uh, actions, uh, but they are simply not enough. As part of that uh, arrest, however, 800,000 fentanyl doses, 800,000 fentanyl doses were taken off the street. It's a towering achievement for public safety, one that comes on the heels of a federal indictment that charged 15 people for their role in a similar fentanyl trafficking conspiracy. However, despite these victories, there is a certain reality that remains. Our brave law enforcement officers are on the front lines of this epidemic. They're the first to respond when a call comes in. 
they often carry life-saving Narcan to intervene in a medical emergency. And regardless of the demands that they may face, they faithfully carry out their duties every single day. It's time for Congress to help uphold its end of the bargain by passing the Fend Off Fentanyl Act. A vote for the bill is a vote to support our local, state, and federal law enforcement officers. It's a vote to disrupt fentanyl trafficking at the source and sanction the money laundering that makes it profitable. Most of all, it's a vote to address the problem both domestically and internationally, which is a top priority of mine. Uh, in 2019, I helped author the landmark Fentanyl Sanctions Act, which was the first major bipartisan effort to crack down on international fentanyl trafficking. As chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I negotiated with my colleagues to schedule hearings that will bear legislative fruit. One of the first hearings we held this year was on illicit fentanyl trafficking, where we heard testimony from Ann Milgram, our former New Jersey State Attorney General and currently the DEA Administrator. To me, fentanyl is an issue that may begin beyond our borders, but it certainly affects us here at home. That's why we need a, all hands on deck to address its root causes through legislation like the Fendall, Fentanyl Act. Before I turn to the sheriff, I just want to end with this. I'm a firm believer that we have to have a, and draw a clear line between going after fentanyl, and I salute the prosecutor as he defined it, and going uh, after those who ever are battling addiction and substance use disorders. The former, going after fentanyl, uh, it should be our focus, uh, as it should be. But we should never mix up, and we can learn from the past on this, any effort to be tough on fentanyl with strategies that further stigmatize getting help and treatment. Substance abuse is an, is an illness that doesn't discriminate. It affects rich and poor, white, black, Latino, all communities alike. Victims of opioid overdoses have household names and hometown heroes. But no matter their status of st or station in life, they each have left behind a circle of loved ones who are shattered by their loss. If we are to turn the tide on rising drug overdoses in America, then we have to treat this issue as the comprehensive public health issue that it is. Patrice and Sally are two perfect examples of why this work matters. Mm -hmm. They both honor the memory of their sons through action, activism, and advocacy. Their efforts have no doubt saved lives, bringing us closer to the day when no parent and no family has ever to endure the loss of someone to opioids. I salute you both and I stand honored to be with you today as we work on this shared goal. And speaking about working on this shared goal, uh, the Atlanta County Sheriff has done an exceptional job working alongside with the prosecutor. The men and women of the department are doing an exceptional job in this regard, and we are thrilled to have him uh, alongside with us uh, in this fight. Sheriff, I'll thank you.